Praise the Lord. Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 16. Amen. Do you know God answers prayer? Do you really? You know He answers prayer? Man, prayer is it's an awesome tool that we have. Many times we take it for granted. We take it lightly. We forget about it. We use prayer like we use a spare tire, only when it's desperately needed. Right? We don't. But prayer is a, is a glorious thing that God has given to each and every one of us that we can call out to the Lord and talk to the Lord in prayer, and He hears us when we pray. There is power in prayer. The choir sings that song, I believe. There is power in prayer. When you pray, you can have an effect. You can change things. You know that? You can, you can turn things around just by a simple prayer. That's right. I've heard of people praying for their car, truck, right? I've heard of people praying for their dog. Yeah, I've heard of that. I believe God answers prayer. That dog's that important to you. I've heard of people praying for their for their livestock. I've heard of people praying for their crops. Right? I've heard of people praying. Uh, I had a good one there, and it was right on top of my head, and I slipped me. I got out of out of my sequence there. Uh, we got we got. I've heard of people praying for for. Uh, what was that one? Please come to me. Uh, I've heard of people praying about their weather. Right? They hold prayer rallies for weather. Send the rain. We need rain. They pray about it, right? I I believe God answers prayer. I believe people pray can pray for direction in life. Right? How many of you have ever prayed for healing? Amen. You can pray for God to move in your life. You say, but isn't it selfish to pray? No. God wants us to pray. God longs to hear us pray. Amen. And your prayer can be effective. I want you to think right now, if you could say a prayer, if you could say a prayer, what would you pray for? What would you pray for? I want you to individually, specifically, if you don't have to, you don't have to shout it out right now, we're not going to ask you to, to tell us what it is, but I want you to think, if you could pray a prayer right now, what would you pray for? What would it be that you would ask God for right now in your life? If you could pray a prayer. Man, prayer is, is just is so easy sometimes. I think that we stumble over the fact that, it, that we can pray and it's effective. We think that surely it's got to be a little harder than this. Surely it's got to be more difficult than, than just saying some words like this and praying. I think people, when, we, when they first come to the Lord, there's many people that don't know how to pray. And they simply don't know how to pray because they think it should be much harder to pray than what it is. Right? It's, it's easy enough to pray. Prayer is so easy that a little child can do it. A little child can pray. Amen. Kayla was telling us in our Sunday school class today about Justin. He is a, he's an awesome kid. If you don't know him, I'll introduce him. But they've been trying to, he, he always, he's always been very good about closing his eyes to pray for his food. But they're trying to teach him how to say words now. And he's talking, so they want him to to say words, and he was hungry the other day, and so he ran up to the table and jumped up and said, love you, Lord, and just took off. I mean, it's prayer is simple enough, it's simple enough for a child 
that's two years old, they can learn how to pray. And they can pray a prayer. Prayer is simple enough that it can be done by those that have no knowledge of God or no understanding of God. But yet we can call out to the Lord and pray to Him. Isn't it interesting? You know, I cannot tell you all the greatness of God. There's no way I could describe to you how awesome God is, how mag- how powerful and how amazing and all the greatness of God. All right, there's no way that I could do it. It is beyond my, my mental capacity. No jokes there, all right? It is beyond my mental ability to describe to you how great that God is. But with a simple prayer that I pray... I can move the hand of God. And I can affect God. Now, isn't that amazing? That prayer can be so simple. So easy. So easy. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we, we've complicated it. Church has complicated prayers. Man, they've, they've printed out books, prayer books. You know, how many of you have got a prayer book? Right? Prayer book. I've got a prayer book. I don't pray the prayers out of it. I like to read them, but I've read them, but I don't, I don't, if, yeah, prayer book, we complicate it. You know, we get into this, you know, our heavenly father, these and thous, and our, you know, all the big words, and we get all words that you read them and you don't even know what they mean when you're reading those words and because we've made it so, the prayer, tried to make the prayer so intellectual, Right? I mean, come on, we're praying to a magnificent God. We've got to make it an intellectual prayer. We've got to use words that are big and long and words that nobody understands. But that's not, that's not how prayer has to be. If you're smart, go ahead and pray smart, all right? But if you're simple like me, you can pray simple prayers. And guess what? The simple prayer is just as effective as the intellectual prayer. Amen. I can pray a simple prayer and God hears it and God answers that prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to be any specific link. Amen. What was Elijah's prayer? 63 words. Was that right? 63 words and it brought fire down from heaven. That's good. That's effective. That's nice. But you know what? It don't have to be a specific link. It don't have to be that long. There's some people, I mean, they can pray some long prayers. When I was in Bible school, there was one teacher, oh my goodness, he could pray some long prayers. He, they would, Brother Branham would have him pray over the offering, and we almost forgot why we were standing. I mean, some of the longest prayers, they don't have to be long. They don't have to be long. Sometimes they can be the short little prayers that are just as effective, just as effective that you can call out on God. And in just a simple few words, amen, you can touch God and God will respond because prayer is effective. Amen. Oh, I need to read my text, don't I? Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind, I just turned off my iPad there, sorry. (laughs) That's never happened before. Whatsoever thou shalt bind in heaven, And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Notice what he says. Amen. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Can I tell you, talk to you about the keys of prayer? Keys. Amen. Have you ever seen somebody that had this huge ring of keys? All right. And you wonder. Why? I hate carrying a bunch of keys in my pocket. I watch some of these some of these guys, and they lay their keys down everywhere. They take them. So, you know what? They they don't want keys in their pocket. They hand them to their wife. They lay them on a pew. They go walk in a door somewhere. They lay them down. They leave their keys. They forget their keys. Right? Keys are important. Keys are very important. I have given out. I hate to loan my keys to people. Because I'm afraid I won't get them back. I'm afraid that I won't. The keys are, they're important. But I look, my dad carries the biggest key ring. 
all these keys. I said, what are they for? What are they for? And when he, and, and I, he, I asked, what are all the, I, I think this one goes here. I can't remember where this one goes. But sooner or later, I guess he thinks he's going to come across something that needs to be unlocked. And he's going to have the key. But he carries that, that big old key ring around. It's got to weigh 10 pounds. No, it's probably not 10 pounds. But it's got it's to weigh him down. He probably would have grew taller like me if he hadn't carried such heavy keys around in his pocket. But, I mean, you got to think about, I mean, all the keys that people carry. There are, key, there are keys for everything. I've got a box in my office of keys. And it's a box, and it's just full of keys. And on the side of the box, you know what it says? Have no idea. You know why it is? It's because all those keys that I've accumulated all these years, and I have no idea what they go to. And I'm afraid to throw it away because as soon as I throw away a key, guess what? Yeah. I'll need that key. I'll need that key. Used to, you could go to Walmart and they'd cut you out a key for just, you know, a few cents. Wouldn't cost you much. Less than a dollar, they'd cut you out a key. Remember those days? Don't want to lose the key to your car now. You know that? Those keys can start, they'll start at $60 to get a key made. And then go clear up over $100 and $200. Some of them even $300 to get a key made for your car. Yeah, if you're driving those fancy cars, you got fancy keys, and they're very important. you got to be careful about those keys. Keys are important, but you know what? There are some prayer keys that are important. Prayer is a key. Jesus said, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Now, here's the keys. It's prayer. It's when you pray and you call out to God. God hears you when you pray. God hears you when you pray, and your prayer is heard. And God will honor your prayer. Amen. First, I want to talk to you about a key of authority. The key of authority in prayer, all right? You know, if you've got, you see somebody that's got a lot of keys, and you think, ooh, they are important. Right? You see somebody that's got, that got keys, they've got to be in somebody that's, if they've got a huge ring of keys, they've got to be an important person. Or they're the janitor. One of the two. But they've got to be... They've got, but they also have to be a person that has some kind of authority. That it lets them go wherever they need to go. Opens doors that to them, that to others, it won't open. Gives them access to places that to others, they don't have access. They get to go places because they have a key... That because of us, we don't have a key, so we never get to go beyond that door. We don't have the authority to go there. A key gives someone authority. It gives them power. It, you give them a key, and it gives them power to enter, to go beyond the place where others have to stop. To achieve and to, uh, to go someplace where others cannot go. But because they have that key of authority and power, amen, they can have access. Can I tell you that prayer is a key of authority when you pray in the name of Jesus? Amen. John chapter 15 and verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. Can I tell you, when you pray in the name of Jesus, it gives you authority. Amen. What you're needing right now, the prayer you need answered, pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It gives you that access. It gives you that power. Amen. To have, to have that prayer answered in the presence of God. Pray in the name of Jesus. That prayer has authority. That key, amen, opens the door. Amen, when you pray in the name of Jesus. 
Hey, man, I know you can pray and you can say prayers, but I always like to say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen, because it is a prayer of authority when you use the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, man, it's at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Let me tell you, it's at the name of Jesus. Hey, man, it gets people's attention. They want people to pray nowadays, nowadays, but they don't want you to use the name of Jesus. They want to let you pray a public prayer, but don't use the name of Jesus. They will let you, they, they don't mind so much if you say a simple prayer, but don't use the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll tell you what, that's the way you're supposed to pray. Praying in His name. Amen. It gives your prayer authority when you pray in the name of Jesus. It empowers you when you pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what you're needing in your life today, that prayer that I've asked you to pray, that prayer, if you could pray any prayer today, pray it in the name of Jesus. Pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen, because I believe that God, amen, answers, amen. I believe that is the key to having your prayer answered. Amen. There's another key. It's a key of acceptance. You know that? Key of acceptance. That you can enter in. You can go beyond that door. You can be accepted there. Right? Right? If you've got a key. If you've got a key. You're welcome if you've got a key. All right? How many of you got a how many of you got a lock on your front door? If you don't, maybe don't raise your hand if you don't have a if you don't have a lock on your front door, we don't want to know that. We don't want people to come by. You know? But we've got we most, almost every one of us have a lock on our front door, I hope. Yeah, you've probably got a key. You know why? Because you're welcome there. Right? Maybe you've given your children, I said this, maybe you have given your children a key to your front door. Maybe. Why? Because they are welcome there. Maybe there's somebody that's a dear friend, somebody that you trust, Somebody that you're close to, and you've given them the key to your front door because they are welcome. They are trusted, and they can enter in and enter come into that, come into your house. Amen. But I believe that the Bible tells us that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We have we can come before God. We have acceptance into his presence. Prayer allows us to come before the throne of God. Allows us to go beyond the door. We're accepted there. We are welcome there. Amen. God longs to hear our prayer. And when we pray, amen, God hears us. We can come right before the throne of God with our prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. To know that God says, come on in. Come on in. Amen. How many of how many of you guys got a key under your, no, no, no don't tell me that. Some people put a key under their doormat. They've got a key in the planter beside the front door. They've got a key hidden above the window there, above or something. They've got it planted there because they know they always lock themselves out or, or in case somebody needs to get in while they're away. They've got a key hidden there, but they know where it's at so they, somebody can have access into, into their home. Hey Amen. I believe, thank God that prayer is the hidden key. Amen. That gives us access into the presence of God. Amen. Right into the throne room of God. Amen. We are welcome there. Our prayer is accepted there. Our prayer is expected to be there. Amen. When we call out to God and pray. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It's a key. Amen. It's a key of ability. Ability got the key you can do something but if you don't have the key you can't do it right the car that you drove in 
you're going to need your key to drive it home. Unless you've had a shady past where you've known how to bypass the key. But most of us are going to need a key to operate the car. You can have your driver's license. You can, you can have the seat set just right, the mirrors just right. You can have everything just perfect. You can have paid all your payments on your car. You may own the car free and clear. You may, it may all be yours. You may, but guess what? If you don't have the key, if you don't have the key and nothing happens, you can sit there in your car and go vroom, vroom, vroom all day long, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You can hit, turn the steering wheel, honk the horn, mash the gas, but you got to have the key. You got to have the key. Hey, man, let me tell you what. Prayer is the key to ability to seeing God do something in your life. Hey, man, pray and see what God will do. Use the key and the car will start. Use prayer and see what God will do in your life. You, when you pray, God goes into action. When you pray, it moves the hand of God. When you pray, amen, all the strength, all the power, all the ability of God is put to work on your behalf. Amen, all it takes is the key of prayer. When you pray, prayer is that key. Amen, why hasn't God moved for me? Why isn't God working? Why hasn't God done anything? Have you prayed about it? Have you prayed? You can sit and you can worry, worry, worry. But guess what? Amen. That is not going to be the answer. You need to pray. Amen. Brother Tom gave me this today. Worrying is praying to the wrong God. That's right. Worrying is praying to the wrong God. Hey man, quit worrying about it and pray to God. Pray and you'll find that God will work on your behalf when you pray. It's the key. It's the key. Hey Amen. In the book of Acts, Peter was taken and he was put in prison. The inner prison. But the Bible tells us that the church continued in prayer and began to seek the Lord. They closed themselves in and they began to pray. They prayed and they prayed. Well, guess what? While they were praying, God was working. When they prayed, God was working. And while they were praying, God came into the prison. While they were praying, the angel of the Lord, amen, kicked Peter and woke him up. Amen. While they were praying, Peter stood up and shackles fell off of his hands. While they were praying, Peter saw the door open. Hey Amen. When they were praying, the guards stood as if they were dead. While they were praying, Peter walked towards the iron gate. Hey Amen. And while they were praying, hey Amen, that prayer slid the key into the iron gate. And the Bible said it opened of its own accord. Hey Amen. What was it? Hey Amen. There wasn't a key, but there was the key of prayer that opened the gate. Hey Amen. What you're needing in your life today? prayer will work prayer will work hallelujah pray according to the will of God pray according to his will amen that God's will be done in your life amen and I guarantee you God will hear you when you pray hallelujah pray from a holy heart from a clean heart Pray from a heart that's given, it's given your life to the Lord. And you've said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Pray from that kind of a clean heart. Amen. And God will hear your prayer. God answers prayer. It's a key. It's the key. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard somebody say, ask somebody, what's the key to your success? What do you think, what do you think the key is to Becoming successful. What is the key to having this happen in your life? What, was, what they're looking for is easy steps that will help everybody achieve whatever that person's achieved. But can I tell you this? The key is prayer. It's prayer. Yeah. The key is prayer. 
Hallelujah. Have you ever been denied because of a lock? You didn't have the key? It's frustrating. Frustrating. But when you have the key, and let me tell you, life can be so frustrating until you get the key. And the key to your life right now is prayer. I asked you, what was that prayer you needed to pray today? What's that prayer you need to pray today? What is it? I tell you what, that's the key to changing your life right now this morning. Maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus. You're not saved. You've not asked God to come into your heart. You've not asked God to forgive you of your sins. Maybe you're just, this is your first time here and you're needing God to work in your life. You know what? The key to your future is this. It's a prayer of repentance. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me. You said, now, it's got to be harder than that. No, it's not. A key. Do you know when you, isn't it amazing when you have the right key, how easy, how easy it works. When you pray that prayer, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Amen. You'll find that you'll find peace. You'll feel the load lifted off of you. You'll feel all of the shame of your sin washed away. Amen. When you just use that key of prayer. Maybe you're here today and you're battling something in your life that you can't seem to get victory over. Can I tell you, the key is prayer. You need to pray a prayer of deliverance. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I need you to give me victory here. In the name of Jesus, use that, use that authority, that key of authority. Amen, and unlock that lock and say, in the name of Jesus, I need you to work for me right here. I need you to deliver me in the name of Jesus. I need you to help me overcome in the name of Jesus. I need you to give me victory in the name of Jesus. It's, it's simple. Maybe you're praying for healing today. Hey Amen. You can say that key to your healing is prayer. Yeah, I, I, listen, you obey your doctor if you want and do all that. But listen, would you obey your preacher today? Hey Amen. And just say a prayer of healing and ask God. To heal you. You can keep taking your prescription if you want. But why don't you just let me prescribe to you if I could. Amen. Just prayer. And pray and see what God will do. Amen. If we trusted in prayer like we trust in our doctor. Oh, we don't want to start down that road today, do we? But that's where your healing's at. Problems in your life? Pray. Facing difficulties? Pray. Family problems? Pray. Need direction in life? Pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand with me right now? Praise God. Why don't we just lift our hands and let's say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, God. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 With our heads bowed right now. Hallelujah. Heads bowed. No one looking around. I want to ask you. That prayer that you need to pray this morning. That prayer that you need to pray this morning. Do you need God to work for you right now? Let me ask you, if you're not saved and you'd like to pray that prayer of repentance, would you slip your hand up? Say, Brother David, would you pray with me today? God bless you. Is there another that put your hand up and say, Brother David, pray with me today? Pray with me today. I want to pray that prayer of repentance. I want Jesus to come to my heart. Say, but Brother David, I don't know what to say. We'll help you with that. We'll help you. Hey, Amen. Just slip your hand up right now and say, Brother David, would you pray with us this morning? Hey, Amen. Lord bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. What about you this morning that you're facing something in your life and you need victory? And that was your prayer today. You needed victory over something. Right now, just slip your hand up. We're going to pray with you. Amen. God bless you. Is there another? God bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Believe me, God hears your prayer. God will hear your prayer. God can move. 
Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. And I believe that God can move and work in your life. Amen. Maybe your needs, and maybe one of those other prayers that I mentioned this morning. Amen. You're needing God to move for you today. Amen. I, and you've got a prayer that you're calling out to the Lord today. Amen. I believe that God will hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, those that lifted your hand, would you just take the moment and come down and kneel at this altar with us? Amen. I want to give you the first opportunity before the altar gets full. Come right now. Amen. I want you to come. Amen. I want you to come. Before we all come, we're all going to come in a moment. But I want you to come, every one of you that will. Come and raise your hand. He's waiting right there for you to receive. Oh, yes, Lord. as they pray this morning, all right.
Amen.